Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Michael Nolan, and tonight we're going to be talking about Paul McCartney's latest announcement. We're getting a brand new Beatle track. I just got one question for you. Are we really? All right, so first of all, I want to back up to the time that the Beatles released their wonderful anthology series and the accompanying albums that came out for that project. Besides the project offering us outtakes that gave us an idea of the Beatles' total recording process, that's why I love all three of the anthology albums, the Beatles also got, through Yoko Ono, access to four John Lennon demos. Now, these demos evidently uh, lacked in quality, and you can give Jeff Lynn the credit for really utilizing the then amazing new technology of isolating tracks and things like that. But it was still limited, and their original idea was to release one song by John Lennon on each anthology. But we didn't get one song on each anthology, did we? We got one song on two of them, and the other was Bear, a track. Now, there were a couple of reasons for this. First of all, this particular track, Now and Then, there was also Grow Old With Me, but I think they were looking at Now and Then. And it was the poorest of all of the demos, evidently, and they were really having a hard time isolating John Lennon's vocals specifically, but maybe even his instrumentation on those demos. Now, while listening back to their attempts to resurrect that song, George Harrison was the one that had his doubts. As a matter of fact, there was a rule with the Beatles. All for one, one for all, and it only took one Beatle to put a kibosh on events unfolding. And back in the 90s, George Harrison was that one Beatle. But evidently, through new technology, and we're gonna discuss that a little bit here, uh, specifically the technology that Peter Jackson used to isolate some of those wonderful conversations that we had with John and Paul. Those conversations could not be picked up with the original recordings, but with his new technology, we got a deeper insight to the whole process behind Let It Be. Now, they call this new technology AI. I'm not so sure that it's true AI. After all, all it can be is algorithms going in search of the presuppositions of whoever programmed those algorithms. But if that's all it is, I have no trouble with this technology. True AI and what they're doing with it not only scares the hell out of me, but I'll have nothing to do with it. You know, I don't care if an artificial intelligent machine creates the greatest symphony mankind ever heard, I would have nothing to do with it. Because you know why? Creativity belongs to the human heart. You know, that AI program isn't being affected by the weather. You know, how many times did a songwriter come in from the cold and come up with lyrics like, baby, it's cold outside. But you know what? Even if it was programmed to feel all those things to duplicate a faster, quicker human mind, it still isn't a human mind. Creativity belongs to the human soul, folks. And Paul mentioned that this is all being done through AI. Now, if he's referring to Peter Jackson's AI, I'm fine with it. But you know, if there's any tomfoolery involved, I'm gonna have nothing to do with this track. I'm excited, yet a little bit leery of the whole proposition. Who wouldn't want a brand new Beatle track? They're only the greatest band to ever exist on planet Earth. And you know what? Paul is almost as big a Beatle fan as the rest of us. He's the one Beatle that just loved the whole concept of being a Beatle. And he's been pretty diligent in not offering us a bunch of junk. Uh, I know it's not totally in his hands anymore, but I gotta tell you, this scares me a little bit, folks. While it would be wonderful to listen to John Lennon's voice again, a brand new song that he wrote, perhaps with Paul writing a middle eight in the middle of it, another Lennon and McCartney masterpiece, what I'm concerned about is 
George Harrison. Now, I know they got these tapes from a widow, and evidently they're getting permission to release this track from yet another widow, Olivia Harrison. And yet, this time, somehow, it's a bit different. John didn't leave any explicit instructions that he didn't like these tracks, don't ever release them if anything ever happens to me. And yet, the last word on the matter we got from George Harrison was, no way, Jose. And yet, you start to wonder, would he say that today? And I suppose when Paul talked to Olivia, he might have even suggested that. You know, Olivia, George was against it then, but the technology has changed so much I think George might have gone for it today. But with George's dissension so bold, we do lose that little bit of one for all, all for one rule with the Beatles. Now I know Paul McCartney's been chomping at the bit to work on this cut since it was kiboshed to begin with. He's probably had it hidden away in some vault somewhere, you know, just wondering what he could do to legitimize that recording. And more power to him, if indeed that's what we're getting. So my question to you guys tonight is, is this really a Beatle track? If you agree that it is a Beatle track, under what conditions would you say that it would stop being a Beatle track? A prayer for one more Beatle song is on the lips of every true Beatle fan, okay? I understand that. But you know what? This isn't an ordinary rock band. Between John Lennon and Paul McCartney at first, and later George Harrison, this band created some of the greatest music from the 20th century. I don't care what genre of music you're talking about. These guys were on such a level for me, I'm a little bit guarded about what they release in the future. As far as AI is concerned, I think we should program the damn thing to be a dinosaur and bury it in the sand. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. A real quick one tonight. I wasn't even gonna do a video tonight, but uh, with this kind of news, I had to get it out. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. The channel grows that way. It sends uh, algorithmic uh, AI-like impulses all over YouTube, and the channel grows. If you haven't subscribed, you're just a viewer, that's easy. All you have to do is hit that subscribe to the tribe button. Tap that top bell icon for uh, getting notified of all my future videos, of course, and you are there. All right, the assholes next door are pumping their music so loud, I only can hope that you hear me. But uh, I do want to say I also offer additional content on my Patreon. For $3 a month, you can become a member of the Tribal Council, all right? And that gives you access to bonus content, early content, shout outs, and voting power. With the $5 membership, you become a Tribal Elder. There you get access to all of those things plus some upcoming live events where you'll have direct access to me. All right, that does it for tonight's video. I'm Michael Noland, and together, folks, as I always say, you and I, we are the tribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.